Actually, I have one question from from our last talk about uh, uh-huh. rejuvenation. So yeah. you talked about trying to uh, reproduce the experiment that Dr. Belmonte did with um, Yamanaka factors, but you were putting in a fluorescent thing and then it got um, exactly. interrupted by COVID. So are you now kind of restarting that experiment? Has it moved forward? Okay. Uh, so let's start. we when I got I when I fell in love with rejuvenation after exa- exactly doing that green Belmonte's paper because before I I was wondered by the achievement of rejuvenation of our cells I think we discussed this the other day that has been achieved fully successfully so cells can be rejuvenated using conventional reprogramming which just also um, erases the identity of the cells. But when you are dealing with cells, that it doesn't matter because the, the, the embryonic cell type that you get, the IPS, the um, prepotent stem cells, they can be, um, as it is called in biology, differentiated, that is converted back into whatever you want, a, a brain cell. This is why they are called prepotent. They, they can become anything. Like yeah. a baby or a, a kid, you can study to be a doctor if you want a lawyer. But if you are 60 and you are a lawyer, it's difficult to become a, an MD2, a surgeon. And so, but you are taken back to the, your baby state, you recover your pluripotency. Well, this is a comparison. The cells is the same thing. So what the researchers do is just they incubate the cells with certain molecules, the iPS cells, the embryonic stem cells, and the cells make force them to differentiate into skin cells, for example. They originally were skin cells for very old people, and they recover their identity, no problem, because they, 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 there is no structure to recover. They were simply cells. So they were cell, change identity, you restore the identity, and the cell is again a skin cell, no problem. And you have the same uh, identity features that the other cell the other skin cell. But what has happened, and this is what uh, researchers wanted, the cell is fully rejuvenated. So you cannot do this in animals. Well, it was thought that it was impossible, but uh, nothing is impossible, especially there there are always um, uh, women and men in whose dictionary the word impossible doesn't exist. So Belmonte was one of them. So he was ingenious and used this kind of interrupted reprogramming to achieve a certain level of rejuvenation in certain tissues. Those uh, mice live longer than the controls, but they uh, uh, age anyway, mm-hmm. they die. Mm-hmm. It was a special model. Well, so is when I read that paper, this was in 2016, I said, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to do from now on. So I lost interest in, 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 in aging, as I said, so it is possible, I thought. Of course, I was naive, anything. Mother Nature doesn't give away such a secret so easily. But apparently at that time, there was a lot of enthusiasm in many people, including myself, of course, with this achievement, which was very important. And then for um, for several years, um, Dr. Belmonte didn't repeat the experiment because I, I was waiting for follow-up, follow-up experiment. And I began to suspect that things were not as easy as I imagined initially. Uh, and this is really turns out to be the case apparently because just recently, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, uh, in Spain, this was in Spain, uh, and another group close to Belmonte, but uh, um, in Madrid, uh, a group led by Dr. Jesus Avila um, used the same kind of animals, mice, that Belmonte used. I mean, transgenic animals expressing the four Yamanaka genes and uh, these genes can be turned on and off by adding the antibiotic toxicycline to the water. So this is the same system, except that these animals were normal animals in the sense that they were not uh, progeric animals. Um, that progeric animals are mice that are um, transgenic too. So they, they have received the gene for progeria, a human gene, and that predisposes them to aging very fast. The animals they used this uh, Spanish group from Madrid was normal animals. They age at the same speed that any animal aged. So they took these animals when they were young. They were transgenic, of course, 
And they started to do this into rapid cycling for several months, letting the animals to get into a middle age when they, mm. they, are, they were, mm. I think, 10 months of age. At that time, they were interested, like myself uh, am, in the in memory, in the hippocampus, in the brain. Mm. So when mm. I wrote that paper, I was really, I said, well, these people has done, have done exactly what they wanted to do. And I was not really, I, have, I had ordered a transgenic animal you know, of this type, but with the pandemic and other difficulties, the animals were not delivered to me. I haven't been yet. In the meantime, someone else did the experiment. And I, I was glad. Well, the, I was disappointed because after such a good experiment, such a good experiment, which really the, the interrupted reprogramming was going on for a long time, like six months. So this was an excellent study. So they look at the at the brains of those animals, the hypothalamus interpretation of the brain where memories are formed. So they assess the animals for memory performance and also they kill the animal and study different components of that region, the hippocampus. And hoping, because there are age associated changes uh, um, in the hippocampus, they they looked at those uh, regions and the, the, to see if there was any, if the animals were younger, the, the treated animals, that the control animals, or if the animal performed better in concerning memory, that the control animals, uh, they virtually didn't. I mean, there were certain small changes, improvement, but really the result was not, the result was not what was I expected, and probably what was not what they expected, and everybody expected. So that Send, sent me a signal. I said, well, Pistoia Belmonte has done, has not repeated the experiment for several years. Obviously, it was uh, difficult. There was something challenging. And then these people in Spain repeat the experiment. Probably they just uh, keep uh, Belmonte aware of everything, receive his advice and so on. And the experiment really essentially, uh, say, say, let's say he didn't fail, but he, he worked very weakly, much weakly than, than expected. So that uh, simple model that was in my mind, in the mind of others, that just interrupted reprogramming in a transgenic, in a transgenic animal could rejuvenate animals in this very elegant experiment didn't work as uh, uh, yeah. we expected. So the signal was, well, that's, that this will not be as easy as it seemed. Interrupted reprogramming is a challenging process and uh, may not result in the rejuvenation that the first study uh, promised. That was true, the experiment. I don't have any doubts about the Montes experiment. It's simply that he used a different model. And so this model were more convenient because it was easy to uh, evidence those improvements. But in a normal animal, which is the animal that really counts, hmm. uh, that was really very weak. So um, I still, of course, uh, what we have to struggle to achieve rejuvenation in vivo because there is no point in rejuvenation. So it's wonderful. Okay, so it shows that it is possible. But uh, we, we have to achieve rejuvenation in vivo. And we are a perseverant species and we will do that in time. So just let me mention another important paper that came, came out uh, last year too, like I, I will ask paper that was published in Nature by David Sinclair the paper, in, in fact, was submitted to, to Nature, I think, one year and a half ago, but there was a lot of demands from the, from the journal. So in the meantime, it was just published as a preprint. Now you can do that. So I, I knew exactly what was the paper, the contest on everybody, you know, there was a lot of interest. So finally, they, they did everything that the reviewers asked, the Nature reviewer, and the paper was published. And um, essentially what they did, they used mice again, uh, just normal mice. They 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 were not transgenic. They were animals that uh, were injected with an, an a vector, not the same type of a viral vector, but not the same time that we we have. But a viral vector expressing three of the four Yamanaka genes. They took out one because that was unnecessary. Was more harmful than uh, useful. So they used only three genes. That's okay. That's okay. That's, that, that was a good idea. And the system was also uh, can be regulated. I mean, turned on and off with doxycycline in the water of the animal. So, but they injected that into the into the eye, 
And the, the virus, it just uh, will attach to a number of cells in that region and do what viruses do is enter the cells and deliver the genes. But of course, this is a tamed virus. So the only thing that I did was to deliver the therapeutic genes and nothing else, no damage. Um, so he verified that the animals express the, the retinal cells, I mean, the nervous cells of the retina, the ones that convey the information to the brain, the visual information, well, had expressed, uh, they have uptaken the, the, the genes, uh, and when they added doxycycline to the drinking water, the Yamanaka genes were being expressed. So this is what he, he wanted. But the rest of the brain, the rest of the body, he didn't know that, would, that was happening. So he didn't have to deal with the problems of uh, transgenic animals because the only place of expression was the, those neurons that I, of they have a body and something that is called, like I worry, uh, an axon is a, a slim uh, prolongation that connects the cells at a distance with other cells. And this is what how the uh, nervous system works. So, uh, so what they did then was to um, pinch, to crush the optic nerve of the experimental animals that of course kill many of, the, of those, uh, not the neurons, but the prolongation is like, a, a, severing a, a limb. Right. So they just damaged that, that nerve. And then the animals have received the, the virus and they, they were not expressing the Yamaha genes because he had not uh, added, uh, he had not added doxycycline yet. But once the, the, lesion, the lesion was done, they began the add doxycycline. So uh, they, uh, the, to the drinking water, the, the animals, uh, be, these neurons of those animals, those neurons only, began to express the, Yaman, the, the three Yamanaka genes. And what they observed, they expressed the genes for, for a long time, like three weeks. So it, it was in a transgenic animal, would be dead just very soon. But this, in, in these cells, neurons of the animal, the genes, they only did good things, which is they uh, regenerated the axon. The axons, the, that, that prolongation, mm -hmm. the neurons, do the axons again. So there was a, regeneration of those those wires and this brought a vision back to the animals because the the, the wire was just repaired you know yeah. so they they would send the signal the visual signals to the brain again and so they, it was a wonderful paper and showed that delivering the Yamanaka genes by uh, not by having a transgenic animal but having a viral vector a carrier like a vector um, does not cause the same effects that uh, it, it was observed in the mm -hmm. in the transgenic animals. Furthermore, they also, because they have a lot of resources, constructed a transgenic animal, a mouse, expressing the three Yamanaka genes. This was a transgenic animal. So the, Yamara, the three Yamanaka genes were in all the cells of the animal. So they, they provided doxycycline to the animals to turn the genes on, and the animals died in four or five days, very soon. So the genes were very toxic, expressed in the transgenic animal, but were very regenerative, expressing the neurons of when they are delivered, especially only to that to that uh, mm. part of the nervous system. Mm. So was, that was a kind of a dual behavior. Of course, there are many um, questions here. Perhaps the neurons are um, not uh, uh, vulnerable to the effects of the Yamanaka gene. Usually those uh, tumors that happen when you express your genes the Yamanaka genes in a, in a um, transgenic mouse happen in the viscera, stomach, uh, guts, and this. Mm, they don't give any time to, for the brain to develop any, any tumors. If they would do in time, nobody knows probably. But in any case, in the case of the Sinclair's experiment, the genes behave differently when delivered in, in that way, when, when delivered in a transgenic animal. So um, this is not like uh, uh, giving us back the possibility of re rejuvenating a whole animal because this was just uh, restoration, regeneration of a certain type of neurons was very important, but uh, the, they sent a signal like this to me. Yamanaka genes may behave in a dual way, one be very benign way when they are delivered in a certain, by, by a certain vehicle and a very um, harmful, Way when they express like part of the animal, 
So um, of course, this is, doesn't solve any problem, but uh, shows us a new new characteristics of the genes. And of course, there is probably a lot of work to be done. But this was really a very important experiment and shows that the Yamanaka gene can be used to achieve regenerative uh, changes in vivo, which was an important achievement. So it seems that delivering genes to the brain, for example, using viral vectors in different regions, maybe in a, in a person with Parkinson's disease, may work. But if you have a, well, in any, any, in any case, you don't want a transgenic uh, human. So uh, that could be useful eventually, eventually uh, in, other, in other regions of the brain where there are age-related diseases. So this is a, just a possibility. This is a, a proof of concept, only that. But what's encouraging, just uh, uh, in the face of the result very weak that uh, was uh, were achieved with just the uh, transgenic uh, animal. So this is um, more or less what I can say concerning the Yamaha genes in vivo. Uh, so I am discouraged. Well, I am a scientist with experience. I don't know that this, uh, these uh, drawbacks would happen. I mean, Mother Nature will not give up easily, but we are persevering. We have to work, to work uh, recruit more people to this, to this task. And sooner or later, I think we will achieve, we will find a way, I don't know which one will be the way to rejuvenate animal. This is a, a very complex task because mm. you have a full structure, mm. com very complex structure uh, to rejuvenate, you just uh, move it back. It's like a, a, a development, but in reverse. And it's not the same that just uh, rejuvenating a cell. I don't mean that it's impossible, but it's much more complex. I have realized of that now. I was really simple-minded before, um, uh, frequently happened. Now I just has, have been brought to a more real scenario. But uh, I am not planning to drop this uh, area of research, not at all. Right, excellent. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.